You are now listening to Redefine Gospel Sounds. Yes, what's good, guys? You're listening to the Redefine Gospel Sounds podcast with my soul success. Hope you guys are good. Hope you guys are well. Hope you guys are blessed. Today, um, we're here with a very esteemed guest. I told him that when I grow up, I'm trying to be like him. And I wasn't lying. Uh, happy to just hear from him. And this is someone that's actually supported this podcast from day dot. So it's um, it's a pleasure to sit with him. And we're here with none other than DJ H. What's yes. going on, people? What's going on? Success, what are you man? telling me, bro? I'm not, man. I'm just chilling. Just, I'm just <laughs> we're flowing. You get me? I'm, we're flowing. We're flowing. <laughs> we're flowing. We're flowing. <laughs> I love that. How are you? We've got a rule here. You're not allowed to say good, and you can't say blessed. Um, I'm in a great place. Yes. I'm in a great place. I'm tired, but I'm in a great place at the moment, just in life. So yeah, that's how I'm feeling. What's got you tired? How are you doing? Oh. See, you're not allowed to extra, say extra, 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 extra Hey, this is how you know I'm sitting with an interviewer. Hey. <laughs> that's good. That's good. I am. Ah, oh, you better see. He's about to say it. He's about to say it. I was about to say it as well. <laughs> no, I'm excited. I'm excited. It's uh, really, we're in the final eight, nine. Okay, I was gonna say something mathematically incorrect, <laughs> but we are we are firmly into the second half of the year, yeah. so I'm excited to. to <laughs> I was gonna say something. I was gonna say something better, but it's all right. I didn't do math for a reason. Hallelujah. I'm excited to finish the year strongly. Yeah. There's a lot of things to, a lot of things to tie off, a lot of things to finish well. I've just been asking God for the grace to finish well recently in just all just all areas of life. Mm. So excited, excited to to continue and finish things strongly. And yeah, most excited for this conversation <laughs> that we have right here in this moment. I was was gonna say before you interrupt, I was not gonna say interrupt this already yeah. because it was it was good. <laughs> always always brownie yeah. points when people ask how I am. Just not to the not not to the future, I guess. And that uh, how yeah, what's been getting you tired? Was it just uh, is it got, life? Is it these great guys at the moment? No, nah, I got so I got two kids. Yes. So one's at the moment three years old, and one is three months old. Wow. So. They will make you tired. <laughs> <laughs> they will make you tired. So, but apart, apart from that, obviously, just work. You know, when you're trying to work to graft and produce something like, yeah. like what you guys are doing here, um, that's tiring in itself because yeah. there's certain things that people don't see that's behind the camera, that's that's two hours before you start filming, three hours after you start filming that you have to kind of put in and stuff. So, we're just trying to put work in the groundwork into improving, evolving, and just making what we're doing even better, essentially. Yeah. Nah, I love that. Obviously, you kind of briefly alluded to it, but you, one of your many hats, you know, your fronting conversations with H, you are a conversationalist for want of a better word. Mm. So to that end, I wanted to ask you, do you find it easier to speak or to listen? It's easy to listen than speak. So it's it's harder to speak if you don't really know what you're kind of talking about or what, you, you can't really read the, if I'm say I'm in the interviewer's chair, you can't really read someone if you're just speaking. Mm. But if they're talking and you listen, then you can tap into what they've said, speak back to them, and be like, "Oh yeah." So when you said, da, 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 yeah. so it's much easier to listen than it is to speak. Yeah. But obviously, that's why not everyone is an interviewer. Some mm. some people in life are interviewees. They like to speak. They like to be heard. And some people like to listen and then come back with something that might help the conversation to flow. Yeah. Essentially, do you enjoy getting interviewed? Yeah, it's calm. It's not because I'm with me. I'm exactly how I would be if I was on the other side of the chair. The same way, like I'm open, I'm transparent, I'm honest. So it's, just, it's the same. It's all the same for me. Yeah. That then to that end, like, has it made you a better communicator, or do you have to kind of separate that, like in in other uh, in other spheres? How I, how I am in general life has made me a better interviewer, but. When I interview people, I don't know if it makes me a better communicator outside of that. I think it's just a case of because I like to communicate anyway, then I kind of just bring that into what I'm doing from a creative standpoint. So then it's just, it's a natural fit rather than it's like, okay, I communicate one way. Then when I'm interviewing, okay, I've got to be this person or I've got to do this. I'm I'm the same person if we were talking, like we were talking just before the cameras come on. Yeah. I'm the same person before the cameras come on, when the cameras are on, if that makes sense. So yeah. I think it's just how I am in in life feeds how I am in front of a camera kind of thing. Interesting. Interesting. No, before, obviously, there's, there's 
conversations with H, but then there's now DJ H. This is just two of the hats I've brought up. I didn't even think it's been five minutes, but we'll, we'll, we'll keep it rolling. I want to really tap into, into the DJ H yeah. part for this section because I know that you, and I, I, I must ask the question, I know you said that the origins of that was, was from a dead gig in Reading. Yeah, that yeah, someone yeah, was yeah. dead. It wasn't, it wasn't moving you. So you, you're going to have to unpack that. <laughs> for someone, for someone to be so, for, for someone to be so uh, distinctive on that, I have to, I must hear that. You know what it was because I, I used to live in Reading, so I was I was down there working on like a uni placement at the time, and like we went out, like went to get some food, then obviously went to this bar, like work, work kind of drinks, food night, whatever, and this DJ was like, we we're in this place, and I was like, nah, this DJ, what is he doing? Like everything sped up. And I think the song was like Rihanna. And I can't remember the exact Rihanna song it was, but I just know, I could just remember hearing her voice. And I remember thinking, this song is about 20 BPM. Faster <laughs> yeah. than what it actually should be. And I didn't know what BPM was really at that time. So then I remember saying that uh, someone's paid him. Someone's paid him to come to this, to this bar. It was like a whole Hawaiian bar as well. Someone's paid him to come to this bar to DJ. I could, I could get paid to do the exact same thing that he's doing. And be better. Mm. These times I'd never touched no decks in my life. Didn't know what I was, didn't know I had to mix and match and mix. And I didn't know I had to do any of that. Had no clue. And then I think I went home because I'd, I'd been drinking at that point. So I was a bit waved. So I was like, Jesus, let me go to the gym. Let me work no. off this wave. <laughs> let, me work, let me work off this wave. And then let me just make sure that I'm in a sober mind when I, when I think about I actually want to do the DJing thing. And then that same night, all the decks. Because I was just like, this guy's rubbish. Like, to me, this guy's rubbish. There's no way he's getting paid to do this. So I was like, I can get paid to do this as well. And so that's how it started. what we're hearing is, if man was like just breakdancing in the middle of the thing, we would have sp spoken to you as like a renowned dancer. That was nah, you know what it was? Or was it, it was, just because it was the a music moment, irritated it was a, you that the much? The music irritated me that much that it was like, the song shouldn't be sounding, and especially, the song shouldn't be sounding like that. So, and especially coming from Birmingham. Birmingham at the time had like a really vibrant, like, going out scene in terms of DJs and all these kind of things. And we've got a lot of great DJs now in Birmingham alone. But especially then, I was coming from a scene where, or I was coming from a place where when you'd go out, the DJs was playing amazing songs. When you go to parties, the DJs was mixing like crazy. Like he's thinking, who is this guy? Or who is this girl? Or who's this woman kind of thing? So then when I go to Reading and I'm hearing this, I'm like, this ain't the standard. Do you understand what I'm saying? So then I was like, I can do this 100%. Like easy, so that's that's kind of how it went, really. Just from there, and then it's like how how can how your journey evolved to the point that you know you're shouting, you know, spinning Dex or Faith Child, spinning Dex or Sean C Johnson, spinning <laughs> these people that they know your name and so they know. Just well, the research, you know. <laughs> this <laughs> this I said, I want to be like him when I grow up. You thought I was joking? Come on, let's have it. Um, but you know, you've got to that space, but that wasn't just you know in the blink of an eye kind of thing. Mm. So for people that are very much thinking about hopping on the decks, but trying to do it to, you know, uh, a, a decent level. How did that journey progress from you, you know, just buying the decks and to, you know, following these guys on tour, following these guys around the country? Was the journey as linear as you thought you were going to be? Or like, where did that, um, where did that distinction come into play? No, so you got to remember, when I've gone to this bar in Reading, immediately, I thought I was going to be good. Then I was on a Skype call with my friends. And I was DJing in the background and we were just chatting because we were all in different parts of the country and some, one, of the, one of them was in New York and we were just talking. And someone goes, wait, 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 wait. What is that noise? What is that noise in the background? I said, I know they ain't talking about me. <laughs> I know for a fact they ain't talking about me. What is that noise, guys? What is that noise in the background? Stop, stop. Everyone stop talking. What is that noise? And I was like, ah, oh, guys, yeah, it might be me. I'm just trying to like DJ. For a good five, 10 minutes, it's pure laughter. There's no words being said at that point. Everyone's just laughing. So I I thought, okay, as soon as I get the decks, I'm going to be good. First, my first gig, if <laughs> you're looking at it like that, my friends laughed me out of the room. So I was like, okay, cool, cool, cool. So what then happened is practice, understanding how decks work, understanding how music works, um, looking, going on YouTube, watching some of your favorite DJs and how they do mixes. But all of it was like, okay, I got to keep working at this. It's not just going to come overnight. What am I good at? What genres do I like more? Like, what genres do I like to listen to? Those will probably be the ones that I probably mix best initially because I like to listen to that. So gospel, R&B, I'm going to be better at doing those than mm. 
doing something that I don't listen to on a regular basis, if that makes sense. Yeah. So just consistent work, consistent work. And then, because I'm was self, i self-taught, so I didn't ask anybody, like, how do I do this? How do I do that? I was just like, okay, let me try and work this out. Oh, that sounds good. Let's try this out. Let's try, oh, let's try this out. Then I would get to a gig and I'd try it out. And then it was like, okay, cool. And then with the Faith Child situation, I was on a gig and he was hosting. And he was like, ah, oh, I like your vibe, you know. Da, 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 da. Um, I'm going to shout you about something. So cool. A couple of weeks, a couple of months later, he shouted me. He's like, oh, yeah, got two got two, two gigs in Germany. Do you want to come? Need a DJ. I said, ah, oh, cool. Didn't have no flight case, no nothing. But I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm coming. <laughs> I'm, I'm there. I'm there. And then, obviously, during around that time as well, I'd released a Sean C. Johnson mi- like DJ mix. And Sean C was like, oh, this is the best mix. Like, no one's ever mixed my music like this. And this was just because I was interested in the music. I like to listen to it. So the mixes just came a bit more naturally. He's one of like your top guys. Yeah, 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 100%. So then he was like, yeah, yeah. So when you DJ for me, like, I want you to da 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 da. And then that's how, in a smooth transition, that's how we kind of get started with Conversation with H because he's the first person that I interview. And that's off the back of him coming back to the UK and all these kind of things, me DJing behind him and all of that. So yeah, so that's how I just had to keep working at it. I had to keep pursuing the passion that I had at the time for it. Because if I didn't, then I would have just been like clanging, clanging on every Skype call that I had with my brethren. But keep working, taking the gigs, like not thinking about the money before the passion was the main thing as well. So I had a lot of free gigs at the start. Like I'm traveling from Reading to Brum to do a free gig for four hours to then travel back to, to Reading and get paid not a dime. But that was because it's part of the craft, it's part of learning, it's part of like understanding the okay, key. Oh, what can I do in this environment? How does this go? How does this mix? All these kind of things. So that's kind of how it starts. Hard work and taking the opportunities to then elevate yourself, essentially. No, we're going to have to get into this. <laughs> we're going to have to get into this because I think we're very much in a time and space where, especially that for my gen, so not to make any... Sorry, <laughs> Andy, yeah, sorry, sorry about that. My sorry. Gen. <laughs> sorry, for my gen. We're very much in a space where it's like, okay, if you've got this thing and you know that you're you're good at X, mm-hmm. X must be monetized straight. What? You went there and they only gave you that? Mm-hmm. What? Like you, And it's like, no, we must make sure that we squeeze it out straight away, straight yeah. away. So where do you see the, if there is a fine line between focusing on the craft first as opposed to like, you know, being taken every which way because you're not maybe confident in charging for your gift or your stuff or however you see that playing it's really about where you're writing the journey so if you're at the start it's all about the craft like there's no point you saying okay i want to become a videographer or i want to become a host and then immediately you're saying to people okay pay me 200 pounds to host your thing okay first of all success i ain't seen you do not one thing so what are you talking about paying you 200 pounds second of all i don't even have those kind of opportunities like that but when an opportunity does come it's most likely going to be free so if you're willing to take that, I know you're passionate about it. But if you're not willing to take it, especially at the start, then it's like, okay, you're just saying it because you might have seen someone on Instagram does it, or you might have seen your bridging says, oh, you'd be good to do X, Y, and Z, and now you want to take it on. So if you're at the start, it's all about the craft. It's all about learning that and, you know, researching that. And just sometimes, like, for example, cameras and stuff, looking into what cameras kind of work and looking into how, you know, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to become a photographer? Are you trying to become a videographer? Do you just want to edit? Like all these kind of different elements. So that's the start. When you start to get to a point when you've done that, you've kind of holding on the craft, there's still going to be people who'll be like, okay, so we haven't got no money. The budget's a bit low. So we can only pay you this amount of money to do this. Now, if you're really passionate about it and you know that you're, you've got something good about you, you know what you're going to do? You're going to take it. The reason why you're going to take it is because I'm going to smash this out of the park because what's going to happen is those three people that heard me do this so from a DJ perspective, those three people that heard that mix are going to come to me and say, oh, I want to book you now. How much do you... Now all of a sudden I went from having a gig that, that was £60 for four hours to three, four gigs, which now potentially are paying £100 an hour, £200 an hour, whatever it might be. So it's about understanding that certain opportunities are going to come along that you might have to take that might be below your value at the initial point, below your worth. But at the same time, if you don't take those opportunities, you don't know how to, it's like in football, you don't know if you match fit until you start playing football, until you start playing in the matches. You can do all these things in training, but until you actually get to the matches, 
then all of us, all that's going to happen is uh, uh, 10 minutes into the game. And they're saying that the player max, uh, lacks match fitness. La- lacks match fitness. Lacks match not, fitness. Not going to go through, the, not going to get to the 90 minutes. You've probably got half, you've probably got 45 in, yeah? Take him off at 60. Exactly. So it's all those kind of things like you have to get match fit, but in doing that, you have to, you might have to take opportunities which are less than your value just so you can get exposure to doing certain things. But don't continue to take those opportunities as you grow because then what happens is people then start lowballing you and be like, okay, success, you remember you charged me £100 three years ago? Can you do it for that same £100 now that you've done three years' worth of content and three years' worth of hosting and three years' worth of this? Now, it's all right. You're in the right to be like, you see what I'm doing. My value's not there. You're right to say no, but you have to get comfortable with knowing that that's where your worth is at that particular point or that particular moment. Have you had to say no? Oh, yeah, 100%. And To people that I know, like oh. to friends. How is that? Then? It's, it's, that's a bit it's easier techie, now. Right? No, it's not techie because it's like, my value is this. Now, if I start charging you the X, you tell your friend, you tell your friend of a friend, oh, he, I charge X, Hayden charged me or H charged me X for the DJ I give for four hours. Now you're going to say, oh, I heard you charge X to X to this person. Can I get that same deal? Oh, uh, now you can't. Oh, but why did it? Now it's all techie. I've got to have a, like, obviously there's certain family members, certain friends that if you come and book me for a gig, it's like, okay, where is it? Money is not even, a, we're, not even we're not even talking money, we're talking where is this, let me just, I'm ready to go. But there's going to be other people who I don't really know like that, who's going to be like, oh, can you can you do it for, this is our budget. Okay, I might not be able to help you, but I can link you to someone else who someone can help you. Can do that, yeah. But I'm not going to devalue my gifting just because someone else's budget doesn't match to that. Does that make sense? Clip that. <laughs> Clip that. Get down the road. <laughs> we'll have that there next, next Saturday. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and the episode is done. Thank you. <laughs> that's good. Um, no, that's that's quite emphatic. That's that's pretty dope. That's pretty dope. What do you think is like most misunderstood about that like, the role of a DJ? First of all, that is partly one of the most important things that you can have at any party, any wedding, any kind of vibe. The DJ is part is probably the most. Bother the two people that either get married, the person whose party is. DJ is partly the most important or one of the most important people that you're, or persons that you're going to need for that particular night or whatever. That's what's misunderstood. People just think, oh, because they charge £100 and that's within my budget, let me book that DJ. But that DJ probably isn't as good as the £400 DJ, but you wanted to save on costs. Now everyone's looking at you an hour into the party saying, why is this DJ clanging all the mixes? Now someone's saying, oh, let me call my cousin. My cousin can DJ. Let me bring it. He's free. He's, he's 10 minutes down the road. Let me come in switch up the vibe do you know how many places I've been in and the DJ's been really like bad but someone tried to cut costs so they booked a DJ on the cheap or they booked a DJ that they didn't really know and then people look at me like I ain't a guest at the party <laughs> like can you take over can you can you do something I'm like they, they ain't booked me I'm off duty I gave them the opportunity to do it they ain't booked me so it's cool and I've seen other DJs go to places and we've looked at each other so when you get kind of known, you look at DJs and you be like, ah, what's going on? Ah, okay, cool. They didn't really. So the DJ is partly one of the most important people or persons you will book for an event if, you, if it requires that. And I think people misunderstand that because, as I said before, their budget might not match that. So... Guys, be listening. Don't be compromising because you want to save money. Hey, if you want to do something, do it. Well, I resonate with that because it's like, I'm that kind of person. I'm so annoying. I know my friends know, but whenever we're at a function or whatever, I'm like, oh my gosh, mix up, mix up, mix up. I'm probably grabbing them like, I can like, or or like before the, before, so song one is playing, before song two is playing, I'm thinking, oh, song two is going to come. Then when song two comes, I'm like, yeah. ah, I'm you. Like, I'm definitely one of them, but oh, like, if I, I'm definitely one of those guys that's like, oh, I could definitely DJ. I, could, I know I can't, yeah, yeah, but like, yeah. I can, like, I think I'm someone that, like, I, I appreciate a good mix. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I, I appreciate good mixes. And I, and I think uh, I'm happy that, I'm happy that you said that because I think it tends to go under the the radar and I think it's just one of those things that people just assume is there. Like, oh yeah, all oh, the DJ's there. Like, oh, the DJ's there. But if the DJ's not there... If you're meant to be dancing at a function and the DJ is not good, you're not going to dance. You're not dancing. And I think the problem, I think the thing that people don't realise is when you go out, like say when you go out, like when people go clubbing and stuff, a lot of the time, their um, happiness and joy is alcohol-driven. So they're either drunk or they wave. So it don't really matter if the DJ is really clanging or whatever, whatever, because 
they're out there in a space where it's like, I'm just happy to be out. Woo! Just, they're just, you, just, just swaying to, sway, <laughs> swaying to I'm a piano like this, you know, just doing all of this. I <laughs> in the yeah. corner and all of that. But what people don't realise, when you get to a function, a wedding, whatever it might, like a party, where it's kind of more private, you don't have that intoxication that's going to carry the DJ through. So the DJ is really important. You're going to need, don't compromise on quality. If you, if you have a great wedding, if the band's great, if the speeches are great, if the catering's great, if the venue's great, why would you then go and say, let me book a DJ who is not equally great to what everything else is for that day? It don't make no sense. Same with a party. If you've booked a nice venue and you've got dressed up and you've got, you've got five different outfits you're going to wear in four hours and then you've got, everyone's got to wear a certain colour and all these kind of things and it's a nice, you know, it's a nice vibe. Why would you compromise on someone who's bringing the music? You're not going to stand there in silence. You want someone who brings the music, who brings it in a quality standpoint. So you have to pay. You have to budget for that. So You guys heard it here first, man. Hey, <laughs> you guys heard it here first. What's your go-to, have you got like a go-to party starter? Or like, let's say that, like, you know, scenario, you know, a like couple hours in, but, you know, guys are still... Bit, bit uptight and stuff is there one song that you have that's like yes this is bringing people oh, to the it depends man because like it depends on the, it depends on the ages really so especially in, in Birmingham so what's different from Birmingham to London which is another thing I don't think people realise is Bashment is a lot bigger here than it is in London and Afrobeats is a lot bigger in London than it is in Birmingham so when you're going to a lot of places here there's, there's certain Bashment songs you can play that came out before I was even born and everyone will get up. So it's certain reggae songs or raga songs or lovers rock songs. Like, she's royal. You could play that to start off a party and you'll see all the grandmas get up. you see all the grandchildren get up because it's ingrained within a lot of Caribbean culture within Birmingham and the West Midlands. Whereas if you do a gig in, like, London, if you play a Burner Boy or if you play an old school Wizkid tune just to start the party off, oh, pe- people are up. It don't even, it don't take nothing. Yes. It don't take not a thing. People are up and it's like, I think it's really just about the scenario, where you are, the location, understanding the people. Because um, obviously I do a lot of like gospel church parties, events and stuff. So obviously there's certain gospel songs that you don't want to peek on, but you also don't want the night to kind of go without someone hearing that Mary Mary song that they wanted to hear or the Kurt Franklin that they wanted to hear. And you might mix in some Becca Folk, so you might mix in some Shireen or or whatever it might be. But there's certain people like, okay, I don't really know these people. It's a nice vibe. But I'm really just working for Looking For You by Kurt Franklin. If I can... This is nice, in it? Like, like, go nice, go but, bless them in it, uh, but like, I'm, still, I'm still waiting for that. Uh, I need that shackles. Uh, I need if, that. If you could play if, Michelle Williams say yes, then <laughs> I'd, be, I'd really be enjoying myself right yeah. now. So it's, it all just depends on the vibe of the, the moment. And you just got to feel it. As a DJ, that's what's important as well. They have to feel the vibe. It's not just about, oh, you're dancing to this now. There's about 70% of you who's not dancing, so how can I get more people up to dance and vibe and stuff like that? Do you approach, because this is actually quite interesting, do you approach like a, a a purely gospel gig, do you approach it differently to like a, just a regular, oh my gosh, that I'm having a wedding and a party? Like how do, you, how do you approach like the two or do you just have like one straight approach and it's like you have your, maybe you've got like a gospel set list and you mix and match or like how do you approach it um i would say from a gospel standpoint i'm always approaching it well the way they're similar i'll say the way they're similar first the way they're similar is you're always trying to give people a vibe regardless of what type of music they listen to you want people to enjoy themselves to have a nice time to party to come away from that saying either my feet hurt because i dance so much or that was really good not even so much for you getting bookings but you want people to enjoy themselves the way they're probably separate and probably different is I understand that with the gospel side, there's an element of ministry that's happening there. So what people fail to realise, especially when DJs are playing gospel, we're also ministering through what we're playing in our music. Whereas from a non-gospel side, everything else, it's not so much ministering. You're actually like, it's more so of you're doing this. You might, you're still a Christian. You still have a your heart is still aligned with what God is asking you to do. But in terms of the music you're playing, it might not be aligned with what we consider to be ministering, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So I think that's where it's different, where the gospel side, you may feel the vibe and also feel the atmosphere 
more so than feel just the vibe. Whereas when it's non-gospel, you're feeling the vibe and saying, okay, what are people dancing to? What can I put on now? Shall I switch the genre? Shall I do this? Shall I do whatever? So it's that kind of thing, really, I would say. Have you ever been put in a spot where it's like, like, or in a in a season, so christian in a season, but where it's like, cool, you're... You're very much aligned with what God is doing, but like a selection of songs where you're like, oh, I'm not really trying to play it, but like I know that it will pop off. Or like, have you ever been caught in that, or have you just very much been comfortable with like, this is the assignment I've got to do. This is what I'm, this is the set list. This is how I'm gonna get through it. So there's there's certain songs I won't play, just just due to the fact I'm not that type of DJ. There's there's loads of those types of DJs out there. So my whole thing was always I was originally just a gospel DJ. That was my thing. I'm just gonna do gospel. I ain't gonna do no clubs, no nothing. And I haven't done no clubs because I've chosen not to do that. But why? Just because I feel like the the market was quite saturated at the time. So like I remember when I was because I went to DMU in Leicester, and I remember that there was a gig, there was a flyer which had sixty DJs. What six zero? Sixty D, sixty DJs. Oh my god! For one night, and I remember going out because like, this place called Liquid and Envy. I remember going there, and each DJ had like 10, 15 minutes. And then what ended up happening is that the DJ that came on first, the DJ that came on fourth, played the exact same songs as the DJ that came on first because they weren't there when the DJ was playing it the first time. So so when I when I experienced that, I was like, okay, yeah, this is a bit, it's a saturated market. And obviously there's certain DJs that are really good, certain DJs that are good, and there's certain DJs that will always get bookings um, based on their name and stuff. So it was kind of a saturated market. So I wanted to be more niche. Um, so yes, I wanted to do gospel essentially. Sorry, I forgot your question. Go back to it. Um, so like, how do you? How was there ever a moment where it was like, oh, what songs not to yeah, play? Yeah, that's yeah, a yeah. that kind of thing. So for me, the certain so all my songs are clean. I have a clean version of songs. I, okay. I don't play any like explicit versions or anything yeah. like that. So, but there's certain songs which you just can't get the clean version to. Yeah. So or yeah. there's certain songs which is, is it's. Two words and then if you take it's, most it's of it words. out, if you take it if out, you take it, there's no it, there's, there's no, no song, there's no song. Yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's it's half of us. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you can't even play the chorus. So then it's like those kind of songs is like okay, why why am I? I've got to remember what I'm playing is still attached to me as a person, regardless if I'm DJ H. I'm still Hayden to people when I finish this. So when people come to book me, they're gonna remember. Oh, you played this song and this song and this song. Oh, do I really want you to play at my event, or do I want you to play at this? Especially from a Christian standpoint, essentially. Mm. So that's why I kind of, kind of tailor it and like, okay, I, I'm not going to play that song because it still aligns with who I. It doesn't align with who I am at all. Yeah, that's pretty definitive. I think I'm pleased with that. Still, <laughs> I think I'm pleased with that, and I think a lot of people listening, because I think especially when I have conversations around this topic, like how do you. Um, gospel DJs how they set out their store for things I think there's always grey area kind of conversations yeah, and people yeah. don't really know how to approach it so I think I think that's actually going to be pretty pretty useful which is fair enough I like that at this juncture we're going to play a game not the questions because we're going to we'll, we'll keep those to the end but um, it's a categories kind of word bits and bobs okay Um, I'll give you a letter and then there are certain like so so it'll be like sport country city da, yeah. da, with that letter, and um, we're just gonna see we're just gonna see how how well you do. How do you feel about those kind of games? Just as a primer, how do you? How yeah, do you feel? It's really, feel right? yeah, we're flowing, we're flowing. <laughs> That's good. That's all right. That's fine. We will we will go with that. Okay, the first letter. I can't lie. I'm just gonna you you will, by the by the by the second le- by the second letter you will see what like I've I've tried to do here. But we've okay. got three letters. The first letter is D. Okay. All right. So firstly, a country. Okay. Denmark. Occupation. Dentist. City. Dundee. Sport. Dodgeball. Food. Dumpling. An animal. Dog. That's good. Okay, okay. That's good. Uh, Jay. <laughs> what? <laughs> is not Jay. is not happy. Cameraman is not impressed. Jay. There's a country beginning with Japan. Oh, yeah. Sorry, yeah. I don't know <laughs> what happened there. You know, my brain went. Hey, you know what? I actually hear it. Japan. I actually hear it. Okay. I actually hear it. Uh, occupation. 
Judge. Sport. Judo. City. Johannesburg. Food. Jennifer. Animal. I had to quickly make sure there was a mass or first, but there is. Does the one begin yeah. with J? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Couple. There's one beginning with J. Yeah. Ah. Uh... Yeah, there's a couple. There's a couple. There's a couple. There's a couple. Now nah, you guys all nodded heads to that. Like <laughs> <laughs> this is crazy. J. There's an animal beginning with J. Ah. Uh... I might have to put you out of your misery, you know. Nah, hold on, hold on. Give me, give me, count down from 10. Count down from uh, 10. I that's even worse. No, no, count down from 10. Okay. Nah, it, it will help me under pressure. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. <laughs> <laughs> this guy made up one cartoon animal that, they, that you will find on CBBs. What's the animal that gives you J? So you've got, you could have had Jaguar, could have had Jellyfish. Oh. Um, oh, I see that there. I would have given you Joey, arguably. Kip Can I Ken. tell you what I was thinking? Yeah. Just making them off in my head. Just, I, was like, I was like, but you know what? Sometimes that's I was how like, the process is. I was you, like, Juicy Monkey. I said, <laughs> I said, I said, that's, you can't form that. I said, Juicy, juicy Monkey. I said, that's that's why that's, we heard him at the end. He said, I said, that. That's, that's the kind of animal you find in the village. Oh, Jaguar, you know, that's going to upset me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, cool, it's, cool, cool, it's cool. all right. We brush it. We move. We move. And our last letter. Um, just just for the brand, then we'll give you H. Okay, excellent. So, uh, country. Honduras. Uh, he's on. He's yeah, making a mess. I'm on now, he's you know. He's making a mess. All right, cool. Uh, occupation. Healthcare assistant. Sport. Hockey. City. Hamburg. Food. Haddock. Animal. Haddock. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Is that ref? Okay, oh, horse, 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 horse. Can we run that on one? No. Is that calm? <laughs> okay, yeah, sorry. Go given. Go stands. Okay, cool. Go stands. <laughs> all right, cool. That, that's, yeah, yeah, fair enough. The monitor, the monitor, the monitor's all right. Hawkeye Hawk, Hawk, said yes. <laughs> all right, that is fine. That is fine. I'll give that to you. Hamburg, that's a shout. I, that's a... <laughs> I don't I know where that. I pulled that one from, you know. Hey, it's from you had to make events after the jail. Yeah, after the after nah. that jellyfish. Nah. Uh, when you came on Honduras, I said, yeah, no, he's locked. Yeah, I was locked in. He's locked in. I was locked in. He's locked in. No, I actually love that. All right. We will we've already kind of taken one of the hats, explored that in depth in terms of your um your DJing, but in terms of the kind of conversational presenting, hosting you, that's something that especially from my, myself and a lot of people that will listen to, to this, hmm. they would want to get a bit of a better better handle on. But you've got conversations with H. But for people that aren't familiar, how did that come about and what is it? Um, Conversation with H is a platform where I interview Christians who are excelling in their field. So it's not just about Christians who are excelling in church. You might be a footballer and be a Christian or you might be a influencer like a really popular influencer but you're a christian or a financial advisor and you're a christian or a really pop popular pop star but you're a christian those type are uh, interview those types of people people who are excelling in their field mm. um how it came about is i was really tired of watching interviews especially with christians and people saying so track seven how did you? How did you come across? That? <laughs> where, scream, where, yeah. where would you? Where, hey. where, what? What? What was the moment that you? Hey. And I was like, that sounds like me for real. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't. I'm getting nothing from this. Like, I don't know anything about the artist. Or I don't know anything about the particular creative. I have no clue apart from a project they've released or something they've done. But I don't know who they are. Very much project centric. Exactly. So my thing was like. I was tired of people tapping into what people do and there was not enough, if any, at that particular point of people tapping into who people are. So I was like, okay, I can't, let me start this thing. A year goes by, I don't do it. The camera, the videographer who I wanted moved to London. So I was based in Birmingham. So it was like, okay, cool. So when I was ready, to, I was like, yeah, I'm ready to do it. He was like, oh yeah, in two weeks, I'm moved to London. I said, cool. He comes back. I'm like, I'm ready to get this started. I said, cool. 
So what ended up happening is I got a call from um, GR360, um, which is like a called Gospel Link 316 based in Birmingham. Um, shout out to Roger Moore. And he was like, oh, Sean C. Johnson's coming down. But we're doing like 20 minute interview gaps. So conversation with H is not a thing at this point. So we're doing 20 minute gaps. If if um, any kind of people want to come and interview and just let us know, we'll put you in the, in the slot. So I was like, yeah, I'll do it. And then that, from that interview, that then propels me into starting conversation with H. Because it's now like I have to do it now. Because now I've got one interview. I can't just have one interview. I've got to have more. This don't make no sense. And so. I crack and started to have as well. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I, one of my <laughs> favourite well. artists, I get to interview and that's the first thing. I said, cool. So from there, I was like, okay, I've been DJing for a little while, built built relationships. My reputation's quite good. It's intact. So I, I should be able to like, let me just holler some of my brethren and stuff. Becca Folks, Triple O, Fave Child. Yo, hmm. can you These guys... These are the guys that is brethren, guys. Called out, called hey. out, called out music. Can, yo, can you guys come to this place in Tottenham with filming? So that first then session, I filmed four in a day, back to back. And I was like, yeah, yeah, come, let's, 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 let's do it. And that was how it kind of started. Like those people, and then those people have people who see their thing. And then they're like, oh, what's this? Never seen this before. This is new. Where's this kind of come from? Same, it's, not to go back to the DJing, but it's the same with the DJing kind of aspects. When I started DJing and doing gospel stuff, all the DJs that I knew that did just gospel, were like 10 years, 15 years older than I was. So when I come on the scene, I'm DJing with people that my parents would go to a party and hear DJ or my parents would book for their party kind of thing. So I was like in a whole niche and now we've got all these other like gospel DJs like who are coming up, the, the Shunzes, the Renz, the Mr. Mints, all these kind of people who are coming up and it's like this whole different scene to when I first started. Whereas with these conversation stuff, there was nothing. So I was like, okay, there's a gap there. Clearly God wants me to step into that gap, how he wants to do with the DJ and stuff. So I just kind of stepped into it and that's kind of how it got started, essentially. Strong. When you can when you can call the calibre of people to come to Tottenham and film, you know that it's going to slide. When you say <laughs> Becca Folks, Triple the Fifth Track, come, you come and they come. <laughs> it's different. I'm trying to be like him, guys. If that's the one thing that you take away from this conversation, I'm trying to be like, hey, well, no, I, I think it's, it's so good to see how like that all lined up and just from that one, just from that one, like, off chance, that one slot mm. is kind of like built to... It's built to you know five seasons, five seasons, and even counting now as yeah. uh, as as that kind of goes through. Um, one thing I wanted to one episode I think I wanted to particularly delve into was or a group of episodes was like your the the whole barbershop series. Okay, so obviously that was yourself, that was Melvillus, that was Faith Child, Slider Cuts, Omar Taki, and yeah, I missed out someone. Um, but that spoke to me in terms of having you know visible but more to the point like serving that like, black men kind of speak about everything pertaining to them and their experiences and stuff so I would love it if you could kind of just speak to how that came about and what you kind of gain personally just from mm. having those guys sit down that's a good question um how it came about was this idea I had and I was just like because I just filmed with slider cut so I'd, I'd done a face-to-face and I said to I said to the cameraman I said yo you reckon Slide of Cuts would like, allow us to like film in the barbershop and stuff, like to have like a group conversation and whatever? And it was like, I don't know, just ask. Four months go by, I don't ask. Because it was fear. So what you have to realise is obviously I'm in a new space. The DJing thing, I can do. I'm behind something. Work-wise, I can do. I'm behind a disc. This thing, I'm not in the forefront. Everything I have to do is like in front of people. So I was a bit fearful because I was like, what if he says no? Even though I just spoke to him, what if he says like, I can't do it? Hollered him. I was like, yeah, yeah, cool. His assistant, deal with his assistant, shout out to Rihanna. And she was like, yeah, so what dates are you looking for? What times? Da, 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 da. Let's get it booked in. Hollered all the guys again, shook again. I was like, hollered all the guys. I was like, yeah, I know you might be busy, but could you come and film? Da, 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 da. Oh, yeah, yeah, what time would you need me to be there? Oh, I swear, it's that. Cool. This time, da, 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 da. this is what we've been talking about. Oh, yeah, that's blessed. Yeah, I love it. So, that's how it kind of came about. And the idea was when you go to the barbershop, especially for, and this is nothing against you guys who are bold, and it's nothing no. against you guys. <laughs> it's, it's nothing against you guys who have long hair. But when myself, success, when we go to the barbershop, there's a lot of conversations that's happening at the barbershop. So the whole point of setting it in the barbershop is certain conversations you have in the barbershop you might not have even when you get home. Because you'd be talking about everything from politics to sports 
to to love life, to, yeah, to all types of to, to, to religion, everything. So it just made for the right setting to have a conversation like that with five black men talking about all those different elements, life, religion, um, marriage, relationships, business, all these different kind of things. So that's how it kind of came about. That's how it kind of put together. And then what I got from it personally was that there's not enough of this. There's not, in, there's, um, I think it's 412 men is, I think it is. 412. Shout out to 412. 412. They do a thing like every Monday. I think they do something every Monday um, in London. But in terms of like content wise of guys, especially in the UK, sitting down, having a conversation just about real things. It's it's not really out there like that. Why do you think that is? Because I'm just because guys don't want to sit down. <laughs> like to get to get someone to get guys to sit down. Not guys in gen. Not guys in general to a degree. Not all of us want to have a conversation about what we're feeling or how our marriage is going. Or some of us don't even go speak to therapists. Some of us don't even speak to our our other halves. So then how can you expect us to be in a group setting with cameras on and talk about where we're at mentally, mm. how we're really feeling? It's, it's a hard thing to do. It's a hard thing to ask, especially black men to do, because we've been taught, you come, into a, you come into a place and you work twice as hard as everyone else. And whilst you're working twice as hard, you cannot be tired. Because if you're tired, that means something's wrong and you can't, you can't show any kind of weakness. So if, imagine you're talking with guys and you're talking about, oh, this is my weak point or this is where I'm going wrong or this is where I feel like I could improve here. Oh, you know, mentally I'm not in the greatest place, but, you know, prayer and da 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 Imagine you're having that conversation with a group of individuals as black men who have been taught all their lives, don't show no weakness, work twice as hard as every other person that you see and just try and get to the top as fast as you can. It's hard to have that conversation. So I think it's, and on top of that, sorry, you've got to trust the person who's facilitating the conversation. So you've got to trust that they're not using you for clout. Now, I keep coming to black men because it was black men in the particular video, but men in general, don't always trust someone to facilitate facilitate a conversation and them not to use it against them in some later form in life. So it's all of those kind of things where it's like, how can I they have to trust me to have this conversation? Because they've got they've got to be like, okay, it's H. H ain't using it for, he's not trying to gain nothing from me. He's just trying to have a conversation that's gonna help someone else. And I think it's that if you don't have someone you can trust who can facilitate that conversation you're not going to speak on camera. And if you don't even feel comfortable doing that and you haven't done that before, then it's not going to happen. Yeah. So That's strong. And I, I like that because I think it speaks to the wider job that we as inter interviewers, conversationalists, it speaks to the wider role that we have in terms of providing that space hmm. um, and making people feel comfortable enough to open up and um, share different bits and bobs that they, they might not have thought that they were going to share before. Mm. When it comes to you, then what do you think it is about you that's allowed you to, you know, like I said, you're five, like five seasons in and, and counting, um, but with all those different guests, what, it, what do you think it is about you and the way that you've conducted yourself that's allowed um, such a space for people to come and really have deep and meaningful conversations? I care. I actually care about what they're saying. Like, it's not a, this is not just an episode to me. This is a, oh, we're talking. Oh, okay, let's, let's talk about that. Let's talk about what happened when you were younger. Okay, let's have that conversation. Or how, do you, how did that make you feel? What, how did that then affect you moving forward? Because you got to remember as well, as much as we're just conversationists and we're interviewers, in the moment, we're part-time therapists. Mm -hmm. For some people who have never been to therapy or have never spoken to their friends about these certain things. So... I actually care about what you're saying. I'm going to listen to every single thing you say. I might even dash the questions. I mean, it might just be, okay, let's, let, let us talk. Because that's, that's clearly what you need right now. Or that's clearly how you're going to open up. And it's great for the cameras. It's great content and all those kind of things. But at the end of the day, I want you to feel like a weight's lifted off your shoulders. I also want you to feel like you've been able to trust me enough to share things that, you know, you're comfortable with on camera, but that, again, give you that, that free, that freeing feeling. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so and it is essentially it's around the fact that I care and I show that in different ways. The intros I give people, I do bear, I do so much research on people that when I do the introductions, people say, how, how did you, how did you get that? When I interviewed Still Shady, he was like, oh, hey, are you the police? Because the, the records that you've got, I mean, the intro is crazy. But my thing is, if I give you your flowers at the start, when we start the conversation, you already feel like, oh, this person cares. You know. 
from me, for, before you even say a word, I'm showing you that I care from the introduction I give you. So then after that, you should feel comfortable because it's like, okay, this, this person's putting the effort to not only write this introduction, but the type of questions they're asking me, they've done the research. So it all comes back to the fact that I care for this conversation more than it shows on the camera. Mm. Sure. I think it's so it's so telling because I think you can always you can always or I say you can always but I think me the more that I kind of take my own steps in terms of um, interviewing hosting speaking to people I think you can you can pinpoint people's like just their general auras and like their um um yeah, the kind of the kind of vibe that they bring with us and into ooh, and, yeah. uh, all that kind of stuff because they <laughs> he's Jesus and Jesus only. Um, but I think with you, uh, I literally told, I literally told Esther Tofi this today, and like she can attest because I messaged her and I said like with H, I get just such a a warm, a homely kind of like thing. Like no, no, like even afterwards, I'm gonna put. I'll, I'm actually gonna put it on the message. I said, so I like with H, it like it's just so warm and it's just so homely. Like and that's why I know that the conversation is gonna be good. And I think that for me, I don't know if it's just because it's just how my brain is wired with conversations, but I think I can be guilty of, and it's not just in like in front of the camera, but just yeah. in general conversations where maybe probably as a result of conversations on camera where I'm just so focused on okay. I've got a sat nav of how I want the conversation to go. Yeah, and it's yeah, like, yeah. okay, yeah, here, okay, yeah, we're going to take a left here, yeah, go, go. Yeah. And yeah, follow us on da 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 da. Yeah, see you next yeah, week. Yeah, yeah. And like, you can, it's it's dangerous because there's that er- element of you could potentially, if you're not properly caring to them and listening to them, that, you know, you're, you're already on autopilot. The journey is going to take about 40, 45 minutes, depending on how long you want the episode to be, and it's job done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that is where, yeah, that's where you kind of have the, have the problem. So I think it's, it just speaks to the importance of, actually taking the time out for that 45 minutes for the hour taking the time out to actually listen to them and yeah. and hear them not just like not hear the episode script or yeah, hear yeah. anything like that sorry to to so to jump on yeah, that point yeah, yeah. when you do that when you navigate a conversation like that you miss a lot so my thing has always been i'm gonna be in this conversation unless there's something unless my wife or my children or my family there's something wrong and i get a call the most important thing to me right now is this conversation. So if you say something that I'm going to be like, I want to know more about that, or I want to tap into that a little bit more because I can see that you haven't really you know, expanded on that previously, we're going to tap into that. Mm. Forget the questions. The questions are there as a base. The questions are not there to be followed like a sat nav. They're there as a base for the conversation. So if you go off track, you can go back to the questions. However, they're not meant to... If you're going to have a conversation with someone whether it's on camera or off camera, you're essentially meant to be involved in that conversation. So there's going to be certain things they say where it's like, whoa, like, let's go back to that because I really want to tap into what's what's going on there. For me, as I said, they're the most, that is the most important thing at this time, at this moment. And then on top of that, what I have noticed about guests is when you listen and you talk to them and you actually listen to what they say and they've seen you've listened to what they say, they wouldn't open up more. You'll see them become more relaxed in their chair. Like it's all body language. You'll see, yeah. okay, I can, I can, I can talk now. Before like you know it, their leg is even on the floor because they're, they're like this. And then you, and then you finish a conversation. I don't think there's been not one conversation I haven't finished, but I haven't, but someone hasn't ever said that felt like a weight's been lifted. That's been one of my best interviews I've ever had. You really listen to what I was saying, and it's all because I don't go on the script. I tell people when I email, because I email the questions to all the guests as well. So they have the questions. So it's like, this is what I'm going to ask you, but this is not the base. This is not how the whole conversation is going to go. This is just the base. I'm going to ask you conversations based on our conversation. Cool. So the question should be acting as a base. Otherwise, you miss certain things and elements, which I don't like when I watch interviews, where you can see if you just ask that There's one a, more question. Open goal. Open goal. If you just ask that one more question. Yeah. Now you've either got a viral clip or you've got some, you've tapped into that person so well that it's like, okay, now you can go on a whole different tangent and still get what you want from the conversation and it not be the questions that you got written down or that you were thought out in your head. So you've got to be present mm-hmm. in the conversation because you're not driving a car. You're not driving a car. You literally one to one. We're st- we're stand still right now, so we can focus. Does that make sense? Yeah, guys, I'm trying to be like him. <laughs> Done. <laughs> let me set uh, let me set the scene for you. So, 
you TBN have just shouted you and they've said, yeah, we want you to come on screen and present some bits and bobs for us. Where are you and how do you feel when you get that notice? Um, so I'm like, cool. Because, and this, uh, how do I say this? That sounded bad. Just, hey, just, just say, we can unpack it, it's fine. Being the best Christian interviewer is not my, or being the best Christian host is not the goal. The goal is to be one of the best in the world at what I do. It's totally different. So when TBN, when I get asked by TBN, and that comes through relationship as well, is because the person who was doing it, I know, and it was like, oh, we would want you to get on there. When we have this opportunity, we're going to invite you. I said, cool. Then they invite Nissi T. Now it's me and Nissi T. Now we build a relationship. Then Nissi T comes on Conversation with H. These times, a couple of months ago, I was trying to get Nissi T on, and it weren't working, but God was just facilitating something cool but when tbn come and, and they holler i'm like oh wow this is this is crazy because my grandparents were watching tbn and the god channel and all these kind of things and now i'm going to be on tbn granted it was a short period for a short period of time but i'm going to be on tbn i'm going to have be able to go back and watch this on tv um but it wasn't it was like okay cool like this feels like the right step i didn't feel i didn't feel scared i didn't feel anything like that because you got to remember like when you've got a goal set out in mind and it's so far as being the best in the world at what you do or one of the best in the world in what you do, when things like that come, you just have to be ready. So I'm using a teleprompter. I never used a teleprompter before in my life. I'm seeing these words just, just fly past proper TV settings and all these kinds. I'm hearing the producer come through, through the sky, the producer's in the booth, producer talking through the, through the speakers in the sky. So, um, H, if we could just have you just step to the right, please. I'm like... Hello. I said, who? Who is that? Hi, it's me. It's me. You can't see me, but I'm here. Um, can you just move to the? If you just move to the right a bit, yeah, just be a bit closer to Nisi. We just want to get you. Yeah, great. So we're gonna go from line seven. I said, oh, this is what this there. is. This I on. said, cool. Ah, I need to step my game up, and that's what happened. So we did it in a shorter period of time than what they expected, because Nisi's already done TV stuff, so she's used. So she, this is professional. I said to Nisi, I'm following your lead, but then. As I'm following this, I'm like, okay, I'm comfortable in this. I can do this. This is not hard. It's just about it's like reading. It's cool. So when it when the call comes, I had to be ready. When I'm in it, I have to improve on the, on the go. And that's kind of what happens with TBN, essentially. What is the... What is the... Because I know you said, you know, you want to be the best in... Like one, of, like, one of the best in the world, which... Like by, by all intents and purposes, that like, I know that you, you definitely can be. But when you're looking at, like... Because I know for you, some of like your touch points in terms of people that you're looking up to. So I know like, you know, you've mentioned Chucky, you've mentioned Julia and Nuga, mm. those kind of guys. So how do you see yourself kind of fitting into that mold? And that has that always been the goal in terms of being in that space? The goal is just to have conversations where people see people for who they are. So the reason why I look, at, look up to the likes of Julie and the, the reason why I look up to the likes of Chucky because when they have conversations with people, it's not based on what they've done most of the time. It's based on who they are. So when you're in that moment, what happened? How are you? What are you okay? Like, where's your where's your mind at? When Julie did the thing with Riz Kid when she was walking around his house when he was about to do the live thing on YouTube, how many how many people in the UK interview wise could we say could do that? Be in someone's house interviewing all these different elements of different people, the cook, the the chef, the the this, the that, the kids running around and, and tugging Julie's leg and all these kind of things. That is a different level. Cool. It's a different level. So for me, when I'm looking at these people and I'm seeing all these things, I'm like, I want to have those types of conversations where people are like, you feel comfortable to share. Yeah. And, and I want to have conversations where you may not have shared before in this way. So I'm going to interview people. I already know that. have had interviews before and they would have spoken to people before. But when you speak to me, it's going to be totally different. That's that's the goal. Like, is to even though you've probably done this before, is to is to change the game essentially. So when I look at those two in particular as well, and obviously Oprah is like the best, and you look at how they navigate conversations, it just makes you go, okay, cool. Tips learned from that, cool, cool, cool. How can I adapt to how I, how I am as a communicator? Yeah, and stuff like that. One thing I like about those two as well, like I think about um, 
the sit down that Chucky did with Stormzy not too yeah, long ago, yeah, yeah. and they're just kind of like going through the going through his uh, his album. Yeah, and it's like the things that you're able to draw out of somebody, the ability to draw things out of Stormzy that is like, but you don't have to ask like point blank questions, yeah, yeah, and yeah. he just naturally just says it. At, but it's just it's re- it's, re- it's really astonishing, honestly, and and I think it just speaks to, of, of course, like the, the the skill that these guys have is like with those kind of things, like you 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 can train and you can, but the, at the root of everything is like you either have what you do. Like I yeah, think like someone simple. like talking that like, he very much has that thing that is like okay, he can literally sit down with someone for even in a very short yeah, amount yeah. of time. Even in that episode, it was it wasn't it was only up to like maybe ten minutes. Is like okay, where were you when you bought the double R? Yeah, and yeah. Storms is like okay, yeah, I was in Dubai. This that this that, and it's like whoa, but like you know, there's so much that you can squeeze out of it. Yeah, and from there, there are so many things that have been, and the next day, there are so many things that I'm seeing clipped up, this, that, this, on Twitter, this, that, this, all from literally that interview because he was able to kind of kind of get that out. So I think, you know, more respect needs to be given to to, to even the interview oh, as a whole. Cause it's, and you got to be passionate about it. As you well. have to. You if, have you're not, to. if you're not passionate about talking to people, after 30 minutes, you are tired. Yeah. You want to go home because it's a great, might be a great conversation. You know what? You're thinking about I, dinner. I just need some food. <laughs> and now you tapped out. You tapped out in the conversation done. and now you can't even you can't even ask the right questions. Yeah. You you 35 minutes in and it's just it's a waste of time. Yeah. So you have to be passionate. And obviously Chucky and Julie, when you hear them speak, they're passionate about what they do. So mm. love that. We're going to get your snap opinion. Obviously, your as a DJ, you're you're hearing as uh, specifically uh, like with like gospel as well. You're hearing a lot of guys. We're in a healthy place in these hours at the moment. Yeah. But who who are you giving your stamp of approval on? Not to put you in a tight spot because as a as a as a as a base level, you love everybody. Everybody you love <laughs> whatever. But because I know people, they like to oh you know we love it. But now if if I was to say okay like. Put me on some guys right now, um, especially like in the UK, because you've been championing them for quite a while. Mm. Who would you, assuming I knew nothing, who are you? Who are you putting me on? Who are you liking the sounds of right now? If I'm putting you on to someone in the UK, or people, people, people. people. So I'm starting off with these three. Yeah. So we're going called out first and foremost. Okay. We want Becca folks because she just got, she's featuring a lot on songs a lot more now. But if you look at her discography, it's crazy. Then we go marvelous. So we're going to give you some rap. We're going to give you some Afro beats with a little bit of chord out music. And mm-hmm. then we're also going to give you, Becca Fultz is going to give you a, a mixture of a little bit. Everything. You know what I mean? Now, if we're talking more so of the newer school, Shireen, I'd say listen to In Full Bloom, that album. I said probably one of the best R&B, forget gospel, R&B albums that came out that year. So go listen to that album. Um, I would then say K. Lewis. So my boy Kieran. Or K. Friend, K. Of um, Friend of the show. Friend of the show. He's, he's super cold. And when you tap into like where he's coming from and how he develops his songs and puts together his lyrics and stuff like that, um, I would definitely say um, K. Lewis. Oh, there was someone else as well and they've gone out of my head. Obviously, we've got the, the still shadies of this world and stuff like that and the triple O's and the fave childs. If you, if you want to get into those kind of vibes, and I'm trying to think there's one more person who I've been listening to very recently and it's gone out of my head. I can hear the song as well. I can hear the song. The song is playing in my head. This is crazy. I was going to say, if you give us a song, we can give it up. Is... The thing is, I can hear the melody. Oh, you can just hear the melody. I can't, I can't, I can't hear the words. That's, that's a good job, though. The fact that it's even something, that's a good the, job. I can hear the melody. I that's can't a good hear job. words. Oh, my gosh. This is going to be annoying. When she speaks. Oh, okay. So when she speaks, if you tap into everything that she's doing, even music wise and just creatively as well, she's super cold, like super, 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 super cold. And then, yeah, I'd probably say, please don't, don't get onto me. Don't be my dear. <sighs> Rebla. Oh my gosh. Rebla. Rebla. Friend of the show. Rebla. And Tides. Rebla and Tides, because they have something about them which very transcendent and how their, their sound is. So like Rebler can be on drill, he can be on hip hop, he can be on grime. Like rebler has got this whole thing where he can just flow that way. And Tides has got a similar thing where he can flow on different elements, but Tides also got the, he can be on there's something that's got a little more R&B to it and all them kind of things. And I really like those guys who can, you're multi-genre, whereas you're not changing for who you are, but you can fit in different genres, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah. 
what's your hope for like the new gen coming through? Because obviously you've kind of, I think you you're at a really good vantage point where like you've been able to see kind of the more established names kind of not only establish themselves in the gospel mode, but just uh, at, at a bit of a broader um bit of a broader view whereas like now i guess you've got like the new gen that are just like com- just coming up straight like just popping up popping up mm. so like where do you kind of see it going um in in the near future i think we're gonna have a lot more content creators in terms of like even though you're an artist you're gonna have to create a lot more content with what goes with your art essentially um and i think people will be influencers as well as artists mm. if that makes sense but not just in our space, in terms of like the gospel space, you'll be able to influence outside of that space with the music that you're producing, the gospel music and stuff like that. And I see a lot more music. What I would want is a lot more EPs, a lot more albums. Because although you like, people get into this habit of releasing single after single after single, it doesn't always give me um, an idea of who you are, if that makes sense. So one person in particular who I haven't mentioned who when they put an EP or album together that I'm looking forward to is K-Marie. So yeah, when she does that, it's long. So when K-Marie puts long. her EP or album together, I'm looking forward to that yeah, because her sound transcends just gospel. Just, Do you understand what yeah. I'm trying to say? So it's it's a thing where it's like, people could be, you, you wouldn't be surprised if you saw, if you was looking at, if you was on a train with somebody and they were listening to her tune. For sure. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's those kind of things. How can we, and I know it costs money. That's the issue. Money is very much a big issue, especially in the UK gospel scene. And it has been for a very long time, whether it's promoters, events, whether whatever it might be, whether it's producing a song, mixing the mastering, all these things cost money. So I'd hope for more investment into it from the, the powers that be, essentially. <laughs> but um, more albums, mm. more bodies of work where I can really enjoy. Okay, I can take you in. I can understand who you are. So then you can then get booked for more festivals you can yeah. get booked for more things because my whole thing is if you want to take this seriously I want God to be able to bless you where there's there's money in your pocket continuously yes. if that makes sense Yeah. Um, I want there to be more called out musics in terms of someone who can go on tour in the, in the US in Africa and all these different places and can do this for a living not having to work a 9 to 5 on the side or not having to work a weekend job just so you can pay for this one song to get put out and then obviously I don't I, I wouldn't I don't want that We've got so many musicians and artists outside of the gospel scene in the UK that can have one or two tunes that that fly and all of a sudden they're set. They don't need to go back to doing the job. Whereas for the UK gospel scene, it takes a lot more for them to get to that. So my hope is for more people to have called out music type blessings on their career, if that makes sense. That, okay, cool that cool that music type like, that's a strong prayer you know <laughs> to see but to be fair seeing what see, seeing what he's done especially over the last over the, over the last few years it's, it's a very at prayer yeah um, I, I i think i think the only other overarching thing is what are the hopes like for yourself um and to add to that while you're thinking do you give yourself do you think you give yourself enough love i do i'm very hard on myself though so i expect the best and regardless of what I'm doing. So I could be playing FIFA. I expect the best. <laughs> I, expect, I expect the best. I expect me to be playing like I'm Pep Guardiola. <laughs> I expect the tactics to be better. More than you believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I expect the best. I do give myself enough love because when I do achieve stuff, I'm like, yo, you're cold, you know? Like, you're, hey, you're cold as well. You're the coldest. What? what? Thanks to you, I'm cold. <laughs> you know, like that. So that's kind of where uh, I show myself love. I could... As with everything, you can give yourself more love and be like, oh, yeah, yo, you can do this and X, Y, and Z. Like, yeah, man, you did well. Like, you got to a point. In terms of what I want to do, um, I just want to host and interview more people, um, elevate what we're doing with Conversation with H. Um, so this will come out uh, whenever this, well, when this comes out, um, I was hosting another podcast for uh, Punch Records. So they just, they just did a tour with uh, Asher Alaya yeah, yeah, yeah. and the tour and oh, stuff like that. So hosted a podcast for them yeah, in regards better, to like, helping musicians and artists to maximise their brand and stuff. So done those, done that. So to do more stuff like that, yeah. like outside of just conversation with H. Um, and then got a couple more things coming that we're just going to keep tight lit on, that we're just working on. And well, it's going to be, it's a journey, but we're trying to take off. Like we're really trying to do this thing properly. And so it, it becomes the main rather than the 
the passion, just yeah. the passion, if that makes sense. Yeah, because I was going to say, main right now, accountant. Yeah, main right now is accountant. Serious. <laughs> Serious. <laughs> Those that are chartered, we salute you. Yeah. We actually salute you. How is that even on a, on a low level thing? Because like, yeah. it's like, okay, you've done... You've done job like you've done your long hours, and it's like, oh, like I've got all this, like my passions, I've got all this to balance as well. So, like, how have you found navigating that balance as a whole? The passion drives you after work, right? So the work is there because you've done that for a living, you've studied it, and those types of things. But as you get older, you start to notice you don't even have to be my age. Sometimes you're 21 and realize, you know what? Maybe I want to DJ, or maybe I want to host something, or maybe I want to do this. Or you reach 18, you're like, ah, the thing I did at 16, I don't really want to do that now. I want to do this. So there's times in life where you you feel like you want to change your trajectory of where you're going. So for me, the accountancy at the moment is great and I love it. You know, I love what I do. Um, but I feel like God's kind of shifting and opening doors and opportunities where it's like, okay, like you're doing this now, but don't be surprised if you go from doing this to then just doing this. So I think that's the passion drives you. So when you finish work or Sometimes on your lunch break, you're doing you're doing up the social media or you're doing up this or you're doing up that just because there's a passion behind that, if that makes sense. Mm, I love that. That's pretty that's that's a pretty fitting way to wrap this up. But before I do, can you let the people know where they can keep up with all the great stuff that you're doing? Yeah, so DJ H uh, DJ H A Y C H on YouTube, DJ underscore H A Y C H on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. Antic, the antic talk. Um, conversation convos with H on Instagram um, for all the clips and stuff. And yeah, there'll be more stuff coming, but we'll we'll keep them tuned with that. I trust it. I trust it. Cool. Uh, all that's left to do is firstly thank you because I've uh, I've hey I've been taken to school. I've been taken to school <laughs> and I've learned. I've I've as I've, I've learned that not even as a throwaway a throwaway line, but like I don't even hands up like I don't even usually seek the audio file straight away after this because I just I leave it to production and when it comes out I, but this one hey I'll even get there before production because there's some gems I need to make sure that I have committed to memory because no it's, it's been it's been really really good but before so. we can before we finish though we have to give you your flowers while we're here because what will happen is you'll post this on Instagram or you post this on TikTok or wherever you post it you know people will give your flowers after the moment so from me to you, success, from H to success, I have to give you a flowers for what you're doing, for the fact that your the, the questions are here and you're just trying to flow the conversation is amazing to see. And don't be disheartened when you put stuff out and it doesn't get received the reaction you want it to. Don't feel like, ah, oh, you know what, this only got this, this and this. We need to do this. We need to go bigger. We need to do da, 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 da. Sometimes you're in the space or the place that God wants you to be in. Because he's saying there's, there's still things you need to learn. Like where you're focusing on is not the right place. I need you to learn in this space. I need you to learn this. And until you learn this, I can't elevate you to X, Y, and Z because you won't be ready. If I put you there, then I look like the wrong person. God's going to learn. I look stupid for putting you there when you wasn't ready. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to build stuff. So I can see God's trying to build stuff in you to then elevate you. Because where you can go is far beyond what you've dreamt or what you've even seen or what you've talked to the team about. Um, even the RGS team and a lot of you, you know, not in the studio at the moment. But where you guys see this going is far beyond. It's far beyond what you've talked about. I'm just letting you know that now. So don't give up just because things don't hit now, because it's not about now. It's about putting in the work now. So then when you get to a point where it's like, oh, I understand. Oh, we're here now. Cool. Oh, it's because we did X, Y, and Z before. And da -da -da. so my my encouragement to you is keep doing what you're doing. You're cold at it. Um, and don't be disheartened when things don't turn out instantly in how you'd want it to. Yeah, man, no, I appreciate that. I appreciate that sincerely. Thank you. Team, yo, we're going to need a meeting. <laughs> we're going to need a meeting, team. Yo, no, that's really, really good. Thanks so much for that. To that end, to keep up with what it is that we're doing when this drops, behind the scenes, clips, playlist updates, all oh. the usual bits and oh. bobs that I've said oh. by now, so you guys should know. Uh, follow us at the RGS Podcast on Instagram, on TikTok, and um, give us a five-star rating on Spotify, on Apple Music. Five stars. five stars. Five stars only. If you're on YouTube at this juncture, pause the video, give us a like, subscribe, comment, DJ H, Dex, 
uh, success team winning or whatever uh, chartered accountant wherever you want to comment please just do that and help us grow as we're on this journey but that is about it we'll see you next time for another episode of the RGS podcast it's been good vibes so say less don't stress and God bless he's already ready peace <laughs>